What is going on, Alpha Hunters? Hope everybody is having a wonderful Wednesday. It is, it is a wonderful Wednesday. So, what do we got today? We had a nice little gap down here on the SPY. Um, even the IWM, some others kind of gap down a little bit. About a 0.2% of a gap down, and then you can see kind of from that open, we kind of went on a nice little run, really for about an hour, a little bit over an hour. Then we kind of went sideways for about an hour, hour and a half. And then we kind of had a little bit of a run here. Basically, from the open to the day's high, about 0.4%. So we've traded within about half a percent from low to high on the day. So nothing crazy kind of going on. Uh, currently about flat, just slightly positive there from yesterday's close. Kind of downtrending here for the past 25 minutes. All right. Cues, 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 cues. Cools. Um, so the teal line here, this was the previous all time high back in the end of 2021, I believe. End of 2021. So you can see that we were got above it yesterday, really, even yesterday morning. We we're kind of poking up over it, and we actually closed over it. Um, kind of curious to see if we were going to do that or not. We actually wind up doing that. But you can see the Q's had a nice little gap down. They traded higher there for the first hour. And basically just been sideways, uh, kind of but towards the daily highs ever since. And there you go. We'll see what happens on uh, on the market here in the last two hours, see if we roll over. IWM, nice little gap down there. Uh, and they had a little bit more of a gap down. So they gapped down roughly half a percent. They traded down all the way about 1% very quickly there on the open. And then uh, you can see they, they bounced pretty good, actually got positive about 0.6% currently up a little bit over a third of a percent on the day DIA a little bit of a gap down they had a nice run for several hours I mean look at that look at that run from that gap down I mean just a nice steady bullish run for about three hours kind of topped out there and just kind of been downtrending now for about an hour so yeah looking uh, looking pretty good there on the DIA we know the DIA is hitting all-time highs as it continues to break out above the previous all-time high back in late 21, early 22. Looking pretty good there. RSP, nice little gap down, trading higher. Mm, okay. A little bit more of a gap down, I think, than the SPY had. Let me check. Yeah, a little bit more of a gap down on this than the SPY. So that's kind of interesting. But it wasn't um, wasn't as choppy on the on the on the open like bearish. As much first five minutes was a little bit, but it's just kind of been trending higher, uh, really for about three and a half hours. And yeah, about an hour ago, kind of nice little pullback for the past hour. Okay, Lucy, let's take a look. What is moving in the markets? VIX. Um, yeah, VIX. VIX. You know, on that Monday gap up, hasn't really moved too much. Look at that. I mean, it is. Those gotta be the three smallest back-to-back -back days, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back days that we've had in a while. I mean, I'm just, I mean, it definitely ain't gonna be any time in 2022, I can promise you that. So that is interesting. I mean, we got some time periods where we had three days of sideways movement, but not as, not nearly as, as shallow uh, not wide ranging like that. That is crazy. I'm not gonna go back and find the time period like that, but uh, Yeah, I mean three days like that really tight not really doing a whole lot. That's That's interesting. I'm uh, I'm gonna think about that one DXY DXY nice little bounce here today uh, Hasn't broken down last week's low Okay Okay gold down a little bit nothing crazy Dollars up a little bit, gold's down a little bit, makes sense. Ten-year yield breaking last week's lows. Curious, we were looking at that yesterday. Kind of had a nice little solid, you know, stair step pattern here for the past three days, or past three days trading. Um, but breaking last week's low, still kind of in a, in a in a tough spot here to go bearish on yields. Uh, so that'd be like bullish on bonds, right? So I'd imagine we're probably going to see at least somewhat of a more significant bounce on yields. 
Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect it maybe over the next week, but probably set up a consolidation, and then maybe we see a bounce in yields maybe sometime uh, mid late January, maybe into February, something like that. Uh, and that's even if we continue down. All right, um, ten and two inversion. Looks like it might be basing here, but it's real. It's getting really tight there. So that's kind of that's kind of the part where you know we're not seeing a great deal of movement, um, especially like what we've been used to early over the past two years. So we see several days of a lot of things just. We're not seeing a lot of movement, you know, 10 year yield, three days of sideways. We're seeing a little bit of a bearishness coming in here on the yields, right? So we're just not seeing a lot of, a lot of movement. HYG pushing a little bit higher, still having a hard time getting through this kind of support and resistance line we got here. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty important zone there. And, uh, We'll see what happens here over the next couple of days. LQD, kind of same thing. Um, as far as like, you know, kind of got up to a spot and it's kind of just hanging out. HYG is at least pushing a little bit higher. TLT. Uh, TLT looks like it wants to push up a little bit. Uh, throwing a nice little lower wick there today. But it's not, it hasn't gotten above this kind of major, this is a major support and resistance level here on the TLT. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. We'll see what happens if we break through it here over the next couple of days. But this is, I mean, the way today's lower wick looks there on the daily looks like it will probably push higher by the end of the day, maybe tomorrow, Friday, something like that. So, um, okay. Take a look at sector rotation. Still pushing down on the market. All right. Take a look at sectors. What is performing and what is not? Okay. So uh, factoring in the gap on the day. There we go. Factoring in the gap on the day. I was like, why is that not lining up correctly? XLC is the best performing sector on the day. So it's communications, houses at Google and Meta or Alphabet and Meta. Uh, energies, XLE, real estate. In line with the market, XLY discretionary is at houses Amazon and Tesla. Underperforming tech, tech is underperforming. So Apple, Microsoft, and NVIDIA, then like all the other tech names that you would think about are in there in the XLK. Industrials, healthcare, materials, financials, utilities, staples, big lagger on the day. Okay, intraday price action. Intraday price action. So take this takes out the gap. So you really kind of see what, what the intraday price action's been. You can see some flows a little bit better. Um, utilities actually had a nice little pump here midday. And then uh, they actually came back down here over the past hour kind of get back into line with staples, how they were trading with staples a little bit earlier in the day. It's kind of weird. So typically you don't see utilities have uh, a great deal of volatility in the trading day, but so it's a kind of interesting one. Anyway, staples, utilities, tech, materials, financials, energies all underperforming. Actually energies might be in line with the market there. Healthcare, real estate, discretionaries, communications, industrials, all outperforming there on the day. All righty. Uh, any any major news? That's the thing is like we're starting to get into like that dead period where there's not much going on. That's kind of what I was you were seeing there on some of that price action. There's just not much in the way of news, in the way of new data. Uh, so the market gets kind of sleepy this time of year. Expect probably just the general stock market to do what's been doing over the past, or you know this week at least, just kind of slowly trickle higher. Um, and that's. Honestly, it's it's a really good opportunity to typically go against whatever the market does this time of year, uh, because whatever it typically does, it kind of falls asleep in doing that. And when people wake up when we get into the new year, they're like, "Ooh, yeah, we're a little bit overbought, or we're a little bit oversold." So typically, uh, you you do see a little bit of a reversal there in that Q1. That's typically why Q1 
to be pretty honest, is is volatile as it is, is because oh, it gets it gets a little bit optimistic there at the end of December, uh, even the first week of January, and then people are like, yeah, maybe not so much. So stocks look to continue end of year rally. Yeah, why belief in a soft landing could be risky? FedEx dives. All right, so we can take a look at FedEx real quick. Um, so I saw, I saw they had earnings, and apparently they missed big time on boxes, on shipping and stuff. Let's take a look. FedEx. Ooh, ooh 11% down. I mean, it hasn't traded much intraday. I mean, but look at that gap down. Gap down and got bought up first 10 minutes, but I mean, look at how sideways that is for for a 10% gap down, it's only traded within a range of about 1.5%. I mean, outside of that first five minutes. So, it's, uh, yeah, that's a big old gap down, man. All right, any takers? UPS gap down? Bet you it did. UPS gap down got bought up. Currently only down 1%. Okay. We'll run through all the transports. Take a look here at, uh, let's see, Union Pacific, Gap Down got bought up, okay. Uh, NSC, another railroad company, up a quarter percent, but they also did gap down. CSX, another railroad company, they gap down, got a bought up very strong, up 0.7%, yeah, especially on that open, look at that open buying up, looks pretty good there on CSX. What about JPHT? Gap down, currently up 1.5%. They got bought up very quickly. So it's like, uh, which which is kind of interesting because they even had bad, earn, bad earnings last time they had earnings, right? Last time they had earnings, they got dropped off, but the past two months, been kind of strong. And then now you have another transportation stock come out, do earnings, say, yeah. Everything's not all 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 sunshines and rainbows out here. So, I'm trying to find transports. <laughs> um, yeah, we know FedEx. Old Dominion, <laughs> Old Dominion looks like it's doing pretty good. Old ODFL. Um, looking pretty good. Up two percent. They also gapped down. Yeah, they got man from a gap man transports got bought up this morning 